Loving Day that there's been no other way to celebrate Wednesday morning than to talk about the decision to go to college. I would be dedicating this video to it is because of my older self. I think before attending college, I wish there was resources online or I was smart enough even just to even look about finances, loans particularly, and also how much I would be making after college. For all of you East Asians out there, whether you're Korean, Japanese, Chinese, Taiwanese, you know that it, parents will always budget out money from when you're little for you to go to school one day because school is so highly valued. It's seen as not just a commodity, but almost a necessity. If you come from a background uh, with some kind of wealth or even no wealth, no wealth, your parents will penny pinch to try to get you into college. No, with some wealth, they're definitely going to have a huge lump of money set aside for you to attend the best colleges. But if you're in lower middle class, middle class or lower than that, then college is like a commodity. You are really just now depending on loans because your parents probably didn't afford or couldn't afford, honestly speaking, for you to go to college. And over the last decade, college has shot up in prices even more. And so that's why we're here to find out if it's even worth it then to consider this commodity. In the United States, it's pretty common that your parents have or have not budgeted out college. It's either one or the other. It's very hard to find an in-between. Um, let's say for the purposes of this calculation that you really are depending on loans for your school tuition. However, your parents, your grandparents, or whoever have allowed and been able to sponsor you for meals and for your housing and travel, etc. <laughs> So we're going to be using the amortization formula. In finance mathematics, it is a formula to help figure out your mortgage or student loan um, payment every month. It is going to be set on a couple of different um, parameters. The first one is the periodic payment amount, what we know as A, so something that you're trying to figure out here. P, which is amount of principal, so like how much you're borrowing from the loan. Let's say if you're going to MIT, it may be 300,000. Heck, I don't know. I is the periodic interest rate. In this case, it should be around 5.8%, which is that's per year. So the periodic interest rate would be like 5.8% per uh, divided by 12, which would be per month. And then your T, which is averagely 10 years. So apparently a very average or common American uh, student loan duration is 10 years, but it really takes like 20 years for most of Americans to pay off their bills. But most lenders will give you a loan across the average of 10 years. Um, in this case, and total number of payments, if you're assuming that you're going to be paying your student loans out immediately after college, if you find a job, let's say you went to engineering school, you got a job out of college, you're going to be paying 10 times 12, so like 10 years times 12 months. The average school of engineering for in-state in the United States is around 11,746 and for out-of-state is 36,327. Honestly, most people will be looking at a way higher principle than what we're looking at right now, but this is just based on flat tuition, just assuming that you're needing help with tuition. So for in-state, you're looking about the total cost after four years of 46,986. And then for out of state, you're looking at 145,309. Big discrepancy. Again, some people need more than that. It's really, really upsetting. That means you will pay an average for loans across engineering school per month if you went to school in state, $516. And if you're out of state, 1,596 or 98. This is statistics that's done by Michigan Tech, and you can tell that the mean entry-level salary for different engineering fields are vastly different, ranging from about 59K to about 80K um, in this field. So it really depends on which engineering field you pick. Looking at the mean annual salary increases a little bit, and then look at the top 10%. So the top 10% is very different depending on which state you are in. I'm going to make another video talking about the pay discrepancies between state to state in America because that's something I didn't know. Honestly, these median salaries start to only increase just a tiny bit maybe after you're about 40 and you've stabilized in your career. You're never going to be paid 
a lot of money, like three million a year, unless you have your own small business. But with something like engineering, you're always gonna be comfortable. There is just a very interesting um, statistic that out of the 2 million undergraduate degrees conferred in the United States from 2019 to 2020, approximately only 6% were engineering degrees. Link down below where my stats were from. So it's not even a hard, it's not even a hard financial choice. It's also a really hard degree. I've not seen a single person, even if they were the smartest person out there that came out of engineering school not realizing how hard it was because some classes were designed to make it hard. <laughs> I'm actually pretty convinced that there's probably only five things you really need college for. Number one is any medical field. That includes being a PA, that includes nursing, that includes dietitians, nutritionists, um, that also includes uh, like pharmacists, biomedical fields. Any field that requires medicine, you probably need college for because let's be real here, you've got to have an education in order to save people, right? Two is, um, Engineering and science. So if you want to work as a professional engineer, let's say you want to be a professional engineer in aerospace or environmental or chemical, or you want to work at a national lab, so you need to have a background in like physics and chemistry, you probably really need that. R&D, R&D is a big one. R&D, if you're not familiar with the term, it stands for research and development. Any field of science and engineering that requires research and development, you probably need some kind of degree for, okay? Sometimes they even require you to have an MBA because it also intersects with the business world. Three is specialty finances. By specialty finances, I'm not talking about small business startup. I'm talking about more along the lines of being an accountant or being a uh, financial consultant or going into taxes. I'm not super familiar with the specialty finance world. There's only three, four of them that I think I named so far, um, but there's more. So if you want to work in maybe one of the big four is like PwC, Deloitte, et cetera, and you wanna be a consultant in financing, you probably need some kind of degree and also a master's or an MBA. Number four <clears throat> is law, obviously. Uh, you know, you gotta have some education as a lawyer and there's probably no firm that I know of in the United States or around the world that doesn't look at your education as a lawyer. You gotta have some solid background, you gotta know your stuff, you gotta have college level education to be an attorney. And the fifth one, which is kind of near and dear to my heart because honestly, if it wasn't for my teachers, I don't know what I would be as an immigrant daughter and that is teaching. For some reason, you really need to have an education before you teach someone. Uh? So if you wanna go into teaching of any sorts, either professorships or uh, K through 12 education, teaching background requires some kind of higher education degree and probably a specialty field. Like if you wanna teach mathematics in a high school, you probably should have a math background or an engineering background. If you wanna teach some kind of history, you probably should know history. So. Those are probably the five things if you're passionate about, I would say really, really requires a college degree. And let me know if you think of anything else, that'd be interesting. Granted, overall, in my opinion of finances, I think that college may be worth it for people who really want to experience um, higher education and feel for what it's like to be in research one day. If you don't know if you like research or not, the best way to figure that out is to try it. And I think college is the best way to do that. Um, also, I mean, I've made some of my long lasting friendships in college and I bet many of you have. Many of people that we talk to are from college and high school and so school is a very great way to, to get people to talk with each other, you know? You probably found out many things you didn't realize you liked until you went to college, such as maybe going and taking photos every once in a while or figuring out that now you don't have mom to cook for you and so learning how to cook and then realizing you like to cook. Those little discoveries all came from going to college. And for myself personally, as an only child, I figured out just how to feel not um, confined, I would say, when I went to college because I went to college um, in a different continent and here I am in the United States and I really, really am a whole different person because of going to college and experiencing newness in a different culture. There's a lot of good things about going to college. 
from a financial perspective, debt is not really great, um, unless maybe it's mortgage, but debt is not really great in any circumstance. So definitely think about college a little bit more before you commit to it. Thank you for watching. This is a heavy video, probably one of the most heavier subjects I'll talk about other than taxes, which is upcoming. So let me know what you think. Take care, you guys.